In this episode, I've got some juicy bits of information that occurred during the maintenance window today, which leads me into a discussion of the two newer airdrop cards, which featured two new abilities and what they do, and then we'll round things off by discussing the newest SPS governance proposal um, involving developing a Bitcoin having event promo. If any of this sounds interesting to you, please stand by. Hey, all you splinterheads, welcome back. Bronze Dragon here with kind of a combo episode. I've got some news updates for you, and I've also got a discussion on one of the newer uh, SPS governance proposals. And I say one of them because we've bomba been bombarded with a number of SPS pre-proposals and proposals lately. So we'll get into that after this. Where I wanted to first start off with is um, a couple of the news items this week uh, are surrounding uh, or surround uh, two new airdrop cards. Okay, so we have Kai, which is coming up. Um, we are getting to the end of this airdrop period. In fact, I believe as of right now, it's within four days. Okay, and Kai is the current airdrop. So at the end of the four days, um, how many ever points you have as far as conflicts go, uh, you know, the drawing will happen and then you will get the proper number of cards. Or, you know, if you're like me, I don't have enough for one guaranteed card, uh, we'll, we'll get a, a, a random pick on that. But um, you can see Kai here has a variety of really cool um uh, kind of roguelike, uh, almost samurai, uh, ninja type uh, effects in, in Feeble, Reach, Ambush, True Strike, Shatter. Sounds like a great uh, card in multiple instances. But what I wanted to look at is one of the new powers that this card features, and that is called Enfeeble. Okay. Once again, if you don't uh, know where this page is, I will leave a link in my show notes. It is directly on the support.splinterlands website, but this is a handy website and it, you can go in and you can look at any of the powers uh, or abilities up and see what they mean. But in this case, it's a down arrow with kind of some sad eyes on it. And the way it reads is it says each successful attack reduces the defender's melee attack by one. So this can really put things into your mind about how to take advantage of that. Uh, get this uh, character to attack uh, more times, faster, which would reduce melee attacks uh, more. Um, multiple things you could think of here. But uh, the one thing I wanted to point out is that it only affects melee. Okay, so if you get in a situation, this this basically would not really be a great ability to use if you're in a situation where you expect uh, range or magic coming in. But uh, I just wanted to point that out. Now, let's go back real quick. Uh, wrong page. Okay, so um, the next card I want to talk about is Venka the Vial. Now, this is the next airdrop card. Uh, for the next conflict that's coming up as soon as Kai is dropped and we start the new airdrop, which will be this Saturday, and I believe it will be the 23rd, uh, if my math is right. Uh, Venka the Vile um, also uh, has a lot of cool abilities as well. We're looking at Charge, Piercing, Oppress, Trample. Um, but is a much different card than what Kai is, okay? Um, this, uh, you know, there's a lot of different, once again, there's a lot of different situations where you this could come in handy, but it also has a new power, and that is charge, okay? So the definition of this is units with charge may attack from any position and will target the enemy unit in the first position. Um, so as you can see, uh, this could lead to a lot of, interesting combinations, shall we say, and time will tell to see uh, what kind of combinations make it work uh, the best, but it looks like, uh, the icon looks like a, a kind of a magneto helmet charging forward. Um, once again, um, basically units can attack from any position and will attack the enemy unit in the first position. Okay, so as we can see, multiple of these abilities um, lead to strategies on who you want to attack and the one thing you know i'm not the the, the best uh, uh stratagem uh maker for this but i will say that one of the worst things that i can see that you can do is spread out multiple abilities and not have a focus 
You know, when you're trying to develop your focus for the hand you're building, you kind of want to, you know, you don't want to be attacking the back, the middle, and the front all at the same time. You want to have a focus. That's my opinion. Uh, leave your comments in the show notes on what you think a good combination for charge will be. Okay, but with that said, let's go back. That will be the new power on Venka the Vile. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to go over, um, there's two more things here, um, quick things. Uh, there is a new rule set. It's called Shades of Gray. This is what the icon looks like. And this re rule set is basically neutral units only, okay? So um, I don't think that applies to summoner because obviously we only have one neutral summoner in the game and um, uh, the print rate is pretty low as far as the amount of people that actually have it, uh, Lux. Um, so I'm assuming that it does not uh, apply to summoners, but that that would be interesting uh, having an all neutral hand. Now, the next thing has to do with uh, land updates and we'll jump over here and go to my land section. <clears throat> but you'll see when you click on production now and you click into a region, you will now have a history button here, okay? And this is pretty interesting. I've been keeping the spreadsheet uh, I guess uh, it's still not exactly needed anymore, right? Because you can go into your uh, history and you can, you know, up for the last year, quarter, month, week, and designate that way. You can look at the grain and what has been consumed, what's been rewarded, all the way down to the the, um, the transaction ID. You can also see research as well. So that's a nice new tool that has been added to the game. So you can see what your uh, you know what your land is consuming, uh, what you got when you actually uh, claimed your reward, etc. So now with that said, there was a lot of other uh, smaller updates, and I will leave the link uh, to this. Um, if you don't happen to have it, this release notes page, um, they do keep a, a running list of release notes. So this is a nice uh, URL to keep handy in case you have questions about, hey, when did this go into game, etc. cetera. So um, they did have a list of other things that occurred during the downtime. Uh, one thing I will note is that lately, We've been seeing a lot of government's proposals around uh, basically cleaning up liquidity pools. Um, there's a lot of uh, liquidity pools that aren't necessarily used um, and they're going through and kind of, you know, uh, either fully getting rid of or rem let me say this, removing um, the large amounts of rewards that were be being given away to pools that were maybe necessary, not necessarily being used. So there's really, in my mind, no real point to keep them if they've demonstrated over the last couple of years, they're just not being used, right? So, and in this case, you can see that a few um, have been uh, altered in this downtime, those being the voucher swap hive and the DEC die uh, pools. And one last note on this, you will note that uh, the rewards, the SPS reward calculation is now capped at 5,000, which, you know, last week, last couple of weeks it hasn't been, but it's something they've talked about. They went ahead and put that into place. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump over to the governance proposal, okay? And I'm not going to read this whole thing. Once again, I'll leave the show, uh, leave the link in the show notes, but it's also under governance proposals to be voted on. Um, so you can check it out. And I would say read through it. I've read through it about three times and also read through the comments because there's all, all um, there's a, a full selection of very valid comments that really kind of look at it from bo um, several different angles. Okay. Okay, so let's read through it for a minute. Uh, I'm not going to take a long time on this, and then I'll give you my opinion. The Splinterlands team requests that the SPS DAO team uh, hire Steam Monsters Corporation to build and launch a new DEC voucher burning promotional event within the Splinterlands game to celebrate the upcoming Bitcoin halving. The team is asking for a payment of $200,000 from the DAO payable in USDC or USDT tokens to develop and operate the promotion, which includes creating and offering two new limited edition promo cards in addition to many other prizes. The event is planned to run for 30 days, starting shortly before the upcoming Bitcoin halving, during which time players will be able to purchase two limited edition promo cards by burning DEC, DECB, or voucher tokens. There is planned to be one legendary and one rare promo card offered for sale, both of which are planned to be dual element units. 
which is cool. As limited edition promo cards, these cards will only be available for purchase during this event and will not be found in packs. Once the event ends, the cards will only be able to be obtained on the peer-to-peer -peer marketplace for other players. So once they're sold, they're sold. Anything else after that is just going to be buying them on the market from somebody else. So here are the details. The legendary promo card is planned to cost 31,250 DEC or DECB or 625 voucher tokens. And the rare promo card is planned to cost 3,125 DEC, DEC, DECB or 62.5 voucher tokens. The cost is meant to commemorate the new block coin block reward after the halving of 3.125 Bitcoin. Please note that all tokens spent to purchase the cards will be burned, and it will not be possible to split the cost for a single card between the available currencies. So it's got to be either or, not both. Additionally, players will earn points for each DEC, DECB, or voucher burned purchasing the promo cards. Every 10,000 points earned by a player will give them a chance at winning one of the available prizes, and the players with the most points in total at the end of the event will win guaranteed leaderboard prizes. Players, with, uh, players will receive one point for each DEC, DECB burned, and 50 points for each voucher burned. We also plan to include point multipliers to encourage players to participate earlier on in the event and reduce the ability for players to snipe leaderboard spots at the end. This means that on the first day of the event, players will receive a three, to three times multiplier for leaderboard points when burning tokens, and the multiplier will decrease evenly each day until the last day when players will not receive any points uh, multiplier. So this is basically the same thing we saw on the Great Burning event. Okay. Uh, the Splinterlands team is planning to provide uh, a bunch of nice prizes uh, as well. Um, they list that it's nearly 100k worth uh, at the current prices. 500 plot tokens, 100 alpha packs, 250 beta packs, 500 untamed packs, 50 essence orbs packs, uh, 100 Asmere dice packs, and 20 runies. Players will have the chance to win one of the above prizes for each 10,000 points that they accumulate from purchasing the promo cards during the event. Please keep in mind that there will be a 3x multiplier. We talk about it on the first day, gradually going down till no multiplier on the last day. This is to encourage people to go right up front and not wait until the end. What I see is people took advantage of that last time and there were still people jumping in at the end, but it's usually people jockeying for those leaderboard positions. Okay. Please note that if the proposal the proposal passes, we plan to submit a second proposal to request that the DAO provide 10,000 Rift Watchers packs from its treasury as additional prizes for the event. While not necessary, we believe the addition of Rift Watcher packs would add greatly to the event, allowing many more players to get a prize while only increasing the circulation of Rift Watcher uh, pack cards by 1%. Okay. Then they go into the leaderboard prizes. They have the burning titles, just like with the last great burning event, the Burninator, the Incinerator, the Scorcher. Um, in addition to the titles, the players in the top 20 leaderboard spots will receive the following guaranteed promo cards in addition to the ones that they purchased during the event. Note that players will receive a single card pre-combined to the BCX uh, specified uh, in the table below. So if you play uh, place high in the top 20 on the leaderboard, uh, you'll get cards. Um, and the higher end uh, gets some really nice max uh, cards. So with uh, number one taking away a max regular foil legendary, a max regular foil rare, a max gold foil legendary, and a max gold foil rare. Very nice. So then they go into the numbers a little bit. Um, and initially, basically, you can read through it, but uh, basically they initially thought about um, just doing the cards and putting them up for sale and not asking for the DAO funding. Okay. So in my mind, I've read through this a few times and I've read through the explanations. In my mind, this really comes down to uh, this event's going to happen. Okay. It's just with the DAO funding or not. Okay. With the DAO funding, all the DEC, DECB, and vouchers that come in uh, for the pack or, or for the cards is going to be burnt. Okay. And we look at this um, and we can see, just like with last time, it should help, at least in the short term, as far as, um, as, far as uh, DEC. SPS and voucher prices, right? Should bring them up a little bit. Um, now, how much? Who knows? Um, another point here is I think that, uh, you know, these events uh, tend to be a little bit temporary on how, how the value stays up. It stays up for a little while and then it comes back down. 
But I will note that DEC has stayed above 0.9 for quite a while since the last one, right? So, um, and I will we'll also point out that there's going to be multiple of these events this year. So I think there's four or five that's going to, uh, I think a total of four or five that is going to occur. So if these keep happening on a regular basis, if people don't run out of money, right, um, then it should keep, um, you know, prices up on the, uh, you know, SPS and DEC. So we'll see. Um, but then they go into the numbers. And basically, to me, what it really boils down to is that they figure that they're going to get more than 200,000 worth of sales. And the number they throw out there is the 400,000, okay? Now, I am going to, uh, if you read below and read the comments, I'm just going to highlight a comment by Dave McCoy because um, it, it's really kind of what I feel. I think he stated it very well. And I, you know, I'm just, I'm not, you know, putting a spotlight on him, but uh, I find that oftentimes I uh, agree with what Dave has to say. And he always seems to state it in a, a logical fashion and doesn't kind of, you know, um, go out of control and everything. So let me just read his comment. Um, he says, I understand some of the comments in this post. The cool thing is, this will either pass or fail as a Dow vote. If it fails, then it's a big problem for the company as they will get all the, it's not a big problem for the company as they will get all the revenues. If it passes, then the Dow is adding value to the game. If this is successful, by successful, I think 400,000 in total sales. As a player, I love this. I can buy exactly what I want or don't buy anything that I don't want. And I can receive free perks from the lottery and the leaderboard prizes if I do participate. I also lo love that the card print rates will be exactly what the demand for them is. So if people aren't excited about it, then I will own shorter printed cards. As a Dow voter, I can see that we are taking a chance to spend 200000 in non-Splinterland assets. I look at it like this. If we hit 400000 in sales, then we retired 400,000 in assets for 200,000, which should lead to most likely a reduction in supply of DECB and vouchers and a need to buy SPS to get the DEC since we're pretty much in balance. If we do 200,000 in sales, then we would have probably rather had the money flowed to the team directly without DECB or vouchers. I personally think this is worth taking a chance on because our risk is somewhat mitigated since we want to see the team do well anyway. I do think we will easily do 200,000 in sales and the chances that we hit it out of the park and do 400,000 is realistic if the two cards are good. And now I'm going, he, he starts right here with a very good point and the reason why I wanted to go ahead and put this in this comment in here. There's also one more reason why I'm okay with taking a chance. We know the plan, the team plans on doing five total of these over the course of the year. It's better to find out what will work and what doesn't, rather than just having us fight, debate, complain, etc. for each and every one of them. Put another way, if it works well, then we have a good model for the next four. If not, then we, we probably overpaid by a slight amount for taking, taking the chance. As I said, though, the good thing is that this vote can pass or fail, and it's not a problem. It re it, it's really what we want to do as the DAO, and as a player, I'm loving the way it's set up. Okay, so once again, that's a comment from Dave McCoy, and it pretty much expresses what I think as well. And I just wanted to call that out. I think it's a very good point that he brings out that we're going to do this a number of times. It would be good to find out if this works right up front. And if it doesn't, we need to go back to the drawing board and figure something out for the next four, uh, for, um, which will continue through the year as probably in the same fashion where, where there'll be a legendary and a rare available, etc. cetera. So uh, interesting times indeed. Um, I will say this, I will probably vote for this. Um, there's a, you can read the comments on this, and I would encourage you to do before you vote because there's some people very against this as well, okay? My feelings are that this will help out SPS, DEC, voucher value. This will also bring a couple cool new cards into the game. Um, it will help um, bankroll the team a little bit to keep them going. 
Um, and overall, I think it's good uh, for the game. So uh, I'm not necessarily always on for these kind of things, but I think that um, I don't see any reason for myself to not um, vote for this. Now, if, the, if we have this and, and it goes off with the Dow proposal and it proved that it just didn't really work, say, for instance, it only earns, you know, 200000 or something, then maybe next time we just tell the, uh, tell the team, hey, just, just do it and put out the cards and then take all the profit directly back to Steam Monsters, okay? That's what I've got to say about that. So uh, either way, uh, thanks for dropping by. This has been Bronze Dragon. Please leave your comments. I know this is going to be a spicy comment fest. So please leave your comments. Keep it civil. Just uh, tell me if you agree with me, if you don't agree with me, um, and give me a reason why, okay? And we'll talk about it. And in case you didn't know, I, I do have a weekly um, live stream on Saturday at 1130 Eastern Daylight Time. We usually go for about an hour, sometimes a little bit more. Um, and I'm sure we'll be talking about this on this Saturday. So you're welcome to stop by. Uh, with that said, this has been Bronze Dragon. I hope everyone on your side is happy and healthy, and I will see you on the flip side.